But we do have an interview with Officer Paul Benton, who assisted in the capture of Lee Oswald in the Texas theater, which occurred about an hour and a half after President Kennedy was shot. He's fought with us like a wild man, and we finally subdued him and took him on out, put him in a police car and brought him into the Homicide Bureau. Who did he aim the gun at? The gun wasn't necessarily aimed. It was started, he started to pull it up to aim it, and Officer McDonald had a hold of his, of the gun. I had a hold of his right arm. <clears throat> we got a thumb or something in between the hammer and the firing pin to prevent it from actually firing, and it just snapped slightly and kept it from going off. It didn't misfire. In other words, you prevented it from firing. Yes, a hand was possibly prevented from but, firing. But there was a bullet in the chamber. Definitely so, and it had been hit with a firing pin, but not enough to go off. Did he say what was reported about he got him a president? No, sir, I didn't hear that. What did he say to you after he was arrested? He just said, uh, this is it. It's all over with now. Anything else? Like so, this give any indication that uh, he thought you were looking for him in connection no. with the president's assassination? No. Did you say you put your thumb or your finger on don't know. It was in the scuffle there. We don't know whether the thumb, finger, or hand. I got a bruised hand from it. I don't know Did you have a feeling that gun had been used before? I don't know. I didn't uh, look didn't at it enough to say for sure. Was, was, was it, was it, was it, this was a darkened theater, wasn't it, sir? No, we had the lights on. You had the lights on. The lights were on. What kind of attitude would you say he has? An arrogant one? Very belligerent, arrogant attitude throughout the whole thing. Did he mention uh, Russia or communism or no. anything to you? No, he did not. He didn't mention the president or anything like no, that? No, he did not. This is it, it's all over there. That's right. Did he ever talk in a foreign language? No, he did not. Do you think he had any conversation? I don't know. I didn't see any others. No. Are you familiar with this subject? No, I didn't. This is a Dallas police detective describing how Oswald was captured yesterday in a Dallas theater. <laughs> with us here in the studios of WFAA-TV in Dallas are two members of the Dallas Police Department, two brave men who took part in the apprehension yesterday of Lee Harvey Oswald. To refresh your memory, Oswald was actually captured several hours after the assassination of the president in a theater some distance from the assassination scene. He was found inside this theater and apprehended. On my right, Detective Paul Bentley, and on my left, Patrolman M. N. McDonald. I believe, uh, Patrolman McDonald, you were involved first in going into the theater. Could you describe for us what happened? Well, I walked into the rear exit after a person had pointed out a person that had run into the theater in a suspicious way. And uh, there was about 15 people inside the theater at the time. And there's one person sitting back there alone near the rear of the theater. And as I approached him about one foot from him, he jumped out of his seat and held his hands up and says, this is it. And uh, he hit me uh, in the face with his fist, blooding my nose, and I immediately grabbed him, and he went for his gun that was in his waist. And I went at the same time, and we were struggling in there, and I received a scratch on my cheek, evidently from the hammer of the gun as it came out of his uh, belt. And as it was coming out, he snapped the trigger on the pistol, which misfired, luckily. Was the pistol loaded? Yes, fully loaded. It had six rounds in it. Had you ever had an experience like this before? Well, not this desperate, no, sir. What was his mental state at the time of capture? Was he hysterical or screaming or...? He was cool and calm up until the time that he made that jump for me. And uh, the whole time I watched him, as I approached him, he was calm. He didn't move, he didn't flinch. Detective Bentley, could you tell us uh, your part in the apprehension? Yes, sir. I was uh, out on the 10th Street address where patrolman... J.D. Tippett had been shot, and we received the information that the suspect had just entered the Texas Theater. Captain Talbert of the Radio Patrol and myself went to the Texas Theater, and Captain Talbert let me out to go in the front while he covered the rear of the theater. On entering the theater, I went to the balcony where I, had, uh, where I was told that this suspect had gone to. Uh, assisting me up there were several uniform officers and I advised them to search the people in the balcony and I proceeded to go down to the lower floor. Just as I got to the back of the theater, I noticed the scuffling that was going on between Patrolman McDonald and this suspect. I immediately uh, 
in some way, I don't know how I sprained my ankle in getting over the, the seats to aid Patrolman McDonald, but in, in aiding him, I twisted my ankle, causing some severe strain to my ankle. At the time I got a hold of the suspect, Patrolman Donald was scuffling with him, trying to get the gun away from him, and by the time we got him pretty well subdued, we had the assistance of four or five other patrolmen and other officers. I believe the crutches behind me are evidence of the uh, injuries you suffered in yesterday's capture. What, what would be your description of the suspect at the time? At the time I uh, encountered the suspect, of course, he was resisting and fighting and uh, scuffling with uh, Patrolman McDonald, and of course, scuffling with the rest of us. He was subdued and handcuffed and uh, was... Uh, making several remarks as we removed him from the theater out to the squad waiting to transport him down to Homicide and Robbery Bureau. I accompanied the officers to Homicide and Robbery Bureau in the squad and talked with the suspect on the way to the city hall. His uh, comment was, why are you placing me in jail when all I have done is carried a pistol into a theater? Uh, we explained to him that uh, he was being placed in jail for suspicion of murder regarding the patrolman J.D. Tippett. He stated he had not shot anyone at that time and uh, became very belligerent on the way to the city hall. We advised him that he could uh, do his talking a little bit later. He was then taken and turned over to Captain Fritz. You made no mention uh, to him of the possible charges of murdering the president at that time? No, sir, I did not myself, because at the time of the arrest, I had no knowledge whatsoever that this might possibly be our suspect in regards to the assassination of the president. <clears throat> Detective Bentley, I understand that you are one of the top polygraph experts for the city. Uh, as you undoubtedly know, the suspect has refused a lie detector examination, but certainly with your experience with criminals, uh, would you care to make any estimation about how he might survive? Is he that cool, calm, and collected, or what would well, you do? <clears throat> my personal feeling at this time certainly would not be the proper time to give the suspect a polygraph af examination after being continuously interrogated by our officers. I think that <clears throat> there's no doubt in my mind that the suspect would be a fit polygraph uh, suspect or subject uh, possibly in a day or two when he calms down a little bit. But he is rather upset at this time, and I feel like a, a polygraph examination in the future would be very good if he would submit to it. Do you believe uh, that uh, he at that time uh, was at all afraid that uh, you were placing him under suspicion uh, for the murder of the president? He certainly didn't appear that way, uh, not a bit, not in the least. Was he unlike uh, most of your confrontations of this nature, or would you say that he was pretty typical? I mean, there anything unique or different about him is what I'm after. No, sir. I think, uh, in my experience with this, this particular type of person, uh, I think he reacted uh, about the same as the rest of them would, uh, not admitting any particular thing that he had done and refusing to give us any additional information when questioned regarding the shooting of uh, Officer J.D. Tippett. I asked for his name and refused to give me his name. I removed his wallet from his uh, back pocket and obtained his identification. And I also asked him if he was still living at the Ellsbury address, and he says, well, you find out for yourself. What kind of identification did he have? The card that I got this information from was a Dallas Public Library card. He had other identifications, such as driver's license, I believe, and uh, uh, credit cards and things like that. Did you make at the time any radical statements that you might uh, associate with extreme left political views? No, sir, he did not. He made no radical statements whatsoever. I believe now we are going to the uh, Dallas City Jail where the mother and wife of suspect Lee Harvey Oswald are entering the doorway into the elevator room, I believe. Isn't that right, uh, Detective Bentley? Yes, sir, that's right. That uh, will transfer them from the third floor, the homicide office doorway in the background, to the upstairs jail cell where Lee Har Harvey Oswald has been held now for almost 24 hours. Right. Of course, we are waiting for the transfer of suspect Oswald uh, to the uh, county jail, which is still expected sometime this afternoon. 
Detective, uh, rather, Patrolman McDonald, <coughs> in your experiences with suspects and uh, the, the capture of uh, such individuals, did you find anything unique or strange or different about uh, Lee Harvey Oswald? Well, not anything you can put your finger on, but he acted just like anybody else would be carrying a pistol because he reached for it immediately as soon as I grabbed a hold of him. And uh, in my experiences with suspects of this nature, they're all pretty calm unless they have recently or within a few minutes had committed some sort of crime. But he had time enough between the time he had uh, the suspected uh, killing of the J.D. Tippett to uh, control his, his nature. And he was quite calm and cool. Did you realize at the time that you may be capturing the man who very possibly uh, could be charged and uh, perhaps convicted of assassinating the president? Well, I had no uh, link in that at all because I didn't know. I was just looking for this suspect that we had a uh, meager description of that had shot and killed Officer J.D. Tippett. And uh, I didn't have any association with the shooting of the president at all with this particular subject. How do you feel now that uh, Oswald has been formally charged with the uh, assassination of the president? Well, I, I'm, I feel relieved quite a bit because the whole nation has, <clears throat> has recorded this shock. And uh, I'm glad that we caught him here in Dallas instead of waiting around him up later on. Dallas has every reason to be proud of its police department today. We've been talking with Detective uh, Paul Bentley and Patrolman M.D. McDonald, two of the men who played a key role in the capture of Lee Harvey Oswald, the man who Dallas police now say they believe is the man who murdered President John Kennedy. This is Roger Sharp reporting from the studios of WFAA-TV in Dallas.